Hello, my name is Jacqueline Martinez. I'm working under the mentorship of Dr. Kimberly Enberg and Dr. Chelsea Reger Marquardt. Our study focuses on the various perspectives of honor students in regards to topics of diversity and inclusion, student involvement, and overall well being. Depending on who you ask, the definition of what defines being an honor student varies across institutions. Honors programs started becoming more popular around World War II and have since then grown to become present in about 60% of four-year institutions and about 40% of two-year institutions. They offer opportunities such as alternative curriculum, research, scholarships, etc. A common form of selection criteria for honors programs include ACT, SAT, and GPA scores. However, due to the variance across institutions, there isn't really a definitive number that one can use to define what it means to be an honors student. At Wichita State University, the location in which our study takes place, about a year ago they decided to opt out of the minimum GPA, ACT, and SAT requirement and have since then placed greater emphasis on a student's essay and resume as their way of taking more of a holistic approach to a student's life. For our study, we use Aston's 1984 Student Involvement Theory as our primary theoretical framework, as well as influences from Chickering's Developmental Theory and Tinto's Integration Model. Aston separates a student's development into three primary categories, their inputs, their environment, and their outputs. A student's inputs consist of their characteristics, background, and any sort of previous experience that they may have prior to college. Everything that happens during college is known as their environment. This includes the interactions that they make, whether that be student to student, student to faculty, as well as as well as any sort of involvement that they participate in, the classes that they take, the student organizations, internships, and research that they participate in, as well as honors programs. For everything that happens after college is known as their outputs. This consists of the knowledge and beliefs and, out and values that change over time as they participate through college. For our study, we used a 20-question open-ended questionnaire directed towards members of the Dorothy and Bill Cohen Honors College who were aging and up. Questions consisted of demographics, as well as questions targeting areas of diversity and inclusion, student involvement, and overall well-being. Of the responses given, most of our participants identified as being white women, which does overall reflect the overall demographic of the institution itself. We had three primary research questions. The first one being, what are the honor student perceptions of themselves, as well as others related to topics of diversity and inclusion, student involvement, and overall well-being? We also asked how do students describe the impact of their environment, the environment being the classes that they take and the student organizations that they participate in. And lastly, what are the student perceptions of their own individual development? In regards to diversity and inclusion, we asked students, how has your collegiate experience prepared you to collaborate in diverse settings? Many students reported sufficient preparation through open dialogue in the classrooms, student organizations, as well as within the campus environment. However, many other students stated lack of preparedness and feelings of exclusion due to low ethnic and gender representation. One student stated that being an honor student, it is hard to find diversity. Most of the times when I do participate in honors events, I'm not able to find people who I can make connections with. We went, then went on and asked students to define the word inclusion. Words like opportunity, equal, and belonging were commonly used. One student defined inclusion as the feeling where individuals learn to respect and celebrate dif differences while providing equal access and opportunities. A few students spoke about their experience taking honors classes and expressed that they felt more diversity and inclusiveness present. However, one student stated that these diverse classes were taken at the student's discretion. Other students expressed their discontent while taking university classes, stating that most of them consisted of individuals who identified as being white men, both as students and as faculty. Most students stated that most of their preparation to collaborate in diverse settings came from their participation in student organizations. Approximately 87% of our students within the study reported involvement in campus activities. Many students said that opportunities of active collaboration increased feelings of inclusion and offered opportunities for, so for social and academic integration with other students. One student stated that being a part of campus activities allows me to connect with other students. This can help me mentally when it comes to classes, choosing professors, or just having someone to discuss things with. Also being involved on campus makes me feel more prepared for life after college. We asked students how has their involvement impacted their overall well-being. Students used words like meeting new people, social interaction, and feeling included to describe their overall well-being. One student stated that the organizations I choose to participate in have helped me feel included and help boost my serotonin levels. We then asked students what their perception of their own well-being was. 
Well-being was defined to students as the state of being comfortable, healthy, or happy in reference to one's own physical, emotional, and mental state. A few students did state overall satisfaction with their well-being, while others reported low motivation and poor mental health. Many indicated that this was due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and they stated that the transition to online learning increased their workload drastically, as well as the lack of human interaction and even death in the family negatively influenced their overall health. One student stated that I'd say my well-being is average for the college student during the pandemic. I am tried and stressed, but I am not, I'm expected to perform at the same level, pandemic or not. The well-being of the average college student I consider to be not well. We also asked students what resources they were using in order to combat the feeling of low well-being. Among the resources given, counseling and prevention services was prevalent at 29%, followed by family and medication. After collecting the data and identifying key themes, we have identified recommendations for both faculty and staff and students. We recommend examining diversity, communicating needs, and promoting collaboration. For faculty, consider incorporating more diversity courses within the required curriculum and offer diversity and inter interdisciplinary events for students. For students, consider identifying your support system and re personal resources and social needs necessary for your overall well-being. And lastly, our data indicates that students who participate in academics and extracurriculars report higher preparedness and overall well-being. For faculty, consider incorporating more opportunities for active collaboration. And for students, consider being involved in student organizations. These are the resources that we used. Are there any questions? Um, I can probably speak from personal experience when it comes to me being involved in the Honors College. Um, I feel like that's really a common misconception um, about honors programs that they actually provide, like they cause you to have more work and stuff like that. But really, from my experience, it's, it's more collaboration within the classroom setting itself. It's less, fo it's less focus on reading material and more so just bouncing ideas um, with each other within the classroom itself. And definitely if they're having some some problems or concerns about taking these classes. Most of the honors faculty and staff, they're really, they like collaborating with students and they're more, more than welcome to actually help them with anything that they need. It's really, you can draw from Aston's theory when it's just like depends on how much you're putting in, that's how much you're gonna get out. Like the honors program offers opportunities such as like the research that um, they provide funding and like scholarships for whether or not you want to study abroad or just for internships and stuff like that. So it's really just putting yourself out there and whether like the, the more you become involved and talk to other people and network, that's really what you're going to get out of it.